His enormous research work in the above areas will provide us to receive knowledge on his lecture in this webinar session on EBG structures and their applications for antenna design. In this occasion, I also welcome all the participants participants from various colleges and universities. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Success is how high you bounce when you hit the bottom. And the key is to focus on goals, not on obstacles. One such talented person is Dr. Taimu Khan, Assistant Professor under the Department of Electronic and Communication Engineering in the NIT, in the National Institute of Technology, Hilcha. Before joining NIT, he served different organizations. In addition to this, he also also worked as visiting researcher at Queen's University, Canada. He is actively associated, associated with different societies and academies. He has authorized and co-authorized multiple reviewed scientific papers and presented works at many national and international conferences. He has involved in various publications and published over 75 research articles in well-indexed in SCI journals of repute as well as in world-renowned <coughs> conference proceeding of domains area. Dr. Khan is a <coughs> fellow of I, IETE, senior member of IEEE USA, senior member of URSI Belgium, and also a member of Board of International Law Journal of RS and Microwave Computer Aid Engineering. Dr. Khan has recently edited two research books, one titled Elements of Radio Frequency Energy Harvesting and Wireless Power Transfer System, and another titled Interference Cancellation in Ultra Wideband Antennas, which are yet to be published. His contribution has acclaimed recognition from honorable subjects expect to all over the world. We are delighted in inviting one such talented person to address us. Now I request Dr. Simon Khan to take over the session. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Sweta, for giving such a nice introduction. Apart from this, first of all, I would like to pay my sincere thanks to Professor Vijayalakshmi and our team for giving me an opportunity for delivering a talk in this ongoing webinar series. Now, should I go into the presentation mode? Is the, is the screen visible to all? Yes, sir. OK. Thank you very much once again. And the topic for this talk is EBG structures and their applications in antenna design. First of all, like uh, where I, I, I am situated in the country, that is northeastern part of the country, and in northeastern part, Assam state, where Assam like situated this one, then in that one, one district, Kachar, and uh, in Kachar, that is Silchar town, where we are having a very beautiful campus of 600 plus acre. The first one is our, uh, this uh, uh, first, the diagram basically represents my own department. Second one is the departmental library. Which one is the Asia largest uh, library in any engineering college? This is <clears throat> like overall strength of our department. We are having total 31 faculty members in all the cadre, starting from HAG, Professor HAG to uh, the lowest grade that is any teacher. The department, like uh, uh, the BTEC program in the department, was started in 1983 uh, with an intake of 20, and later, presently, we are having 150 UG intake. Then, in 2004, we have started PhD programs in different disciplines in the department. In 2007 and 13, respectively, we have started two different uh, master's program. One is in microelectronics and VLSI design. Second one is communication and signal processing engineering. Now, <clears throat> let us come to the main content of the presentation. 
I'm going to start with the very basic fundamentals of wireless communication, then uh, ultra wideband communication and its need, why, why it is important. So in our daily life, then some, several challenges in ultra wideband technology and its remedial using EBG structures, first part. Then second one means I'm going to extend my talk in the second part that is approach to performance, different performance improvement using frequency selective surfaces, which is the extension of electromagnetic band cap structures. Then some concluding remarks, acknowledgement, then published work based on this particular area, then question answer session. <clears throat> like now, nowadays we all are living in a wireless world where we are either connected to the wireless system or we are going to be connected uh, through wireless devices starting from our home towns in uh, home uh, in, in within the home that we are having several gadgets in our home which are wirelessly connected like our mobile phone uh, that is going to be controlled several appliances in the home also several apps several gadgets have already been developed for connecting wireless uh, wirelessly to the like mouse is connected wirelessly to the pc then um, then ultimately uh, keyboard is also connected nowadays through wire, wireless form of uh, these all these examples basically belongs to the short range of communication if we go beyond this uh, box of short range communication there is an, another world of long range communication where we see uh, that uh, a different form of communication having uh, connectivity from earth to satellite link which is thousands of kilometers away from the earth surface then <clears throat> earth to like uh, satellite means you know, lower orbit or uh, satellites and especially then deep space communication all these are belongings to the long range communication each each one is having its own advantage and drawback that no need to discuss here because the topic is something else that uh, this uh, initially uh, this uh, this uh, part i have incorporated just to create a continuity in the talk then you know coming back to the short range communication that uh, nowadays like uh, ultra wideband communication technology is being widely used for indoor communication or short range communication that is ultimately having it's on like if, if you see here in figure one that different wireless technologies have been used for or are being used for short range communication starting from bluetooth then a uh, wi-fi hack come into the picture ymax is there then cellular gsm etc if you see that for left hand side figure that that is representing basically the data data rates versus uh, range range in meters or uh, that one in for short range we that the best best possible solution is the ultra bluetooth but ultimately if we see the data rates that what what we can achieve only one mbps but in short range communication that one gbp up to one gbps data rates we can achieve easily by using the ultra wideband technologies like this is the just an overview of different uh, uh, different short range wireless communication or different short range short range wireless technology and right hand side that different the gadgets electronic gadgets are being connected through that wireless technology short range wireless technology several advantage and applications are there that we can go uh, in detail later on then ultimately the uh, ultra wideband communication came into existence initially in 1960s but at that period of time it was used only for the radar application for some different sectors but in 2002 Federal Communication Commission USA released an unlicensed band of 3.1 to 10.6 gigahertz for for free free use application or unlicensed application. That day onward, that uh, a, a drastic enhancement has come into the technological development as well as the application domain for ultra wideband communication. Like if we uh, analyze the period of 2002, because at that period of time, several wireless technologies were also there when UWB unlicensed, unlicensed band of 3.1 to 10.6 gigahertz came into the market. That uh, I'm, I'm coming to that one, uh, this one. Then here we can see that several wireless technologies are there within that band of 3.1 to 10.6 gigahertz. Look out what is happening here that if we see this diagram, like this, this region is specifically that is overlapped with another, another series of low, low another series of uh, 
short range wireless communication that is WiMAX is there which is 3.1 to 3.6 gigahertz then mid 5G which is recently incorporated in that UWB band that is 3.4 to 3.8 gigahertz then GPS the band is completely bypassed from that UWB range, which is not having a problem for us. Then C-band satellite downlink as well as uplink, X-band satellite downlink and as well as an uplink. If you see this region, that ultimately, when in 2002, ultra-wideband communication came into the market, then ultimately, what was the solution for that? We should bypass, of, bypass all these low range of this, like we should bypass all these, uh, uh, short range of communication short range wireless technology we need to incorporate a solution we need to make make the uh, uh, ultra wideband technology in a compatible manner which which is having the capability of rejecting the interference caused by this short range wireless technology so that is the challenge at the period of time 2002 onward and nowadays like that day onward a gradual enhancement is coming into the market in terms of research or in terms of uh, already developed uh, electronic gadgets which is highly uh, which is highly uh, acceptable in the form of rejecting these low range of wireless communication low range means uh, the uh, other wireless technologies as compared to that uwb range when we are using that things as a UWB as a final destination here we can see that uh, overall power rate indoor and outdoor power dissipation in terms of that uh, UWB technology in case of 3.1 to 10.6 gigahertz minus 41.3 dBm power is used for indoor as well as for outdoor communication and it is corresponding what per megahertz is 7.41 into 10 to the power minus minus eight watt per megahertz you can see which is very small which is just like to a noise floor uh, ultimately it is not going to harm to the human life as we use the several gadgets based on that uwb technology now <clears throat> i'm going back to that uh, slide because this is the second if you see the block diagram of the communication system it is basically having this uh, a rough block diagram of transmitter a rough block diagram of receiver in that one ultimately main causes has comes into the ultra wideband technology in the form of interference which is uh, I'm, I'm going to focus that uh, specific problems in this talk that is how to reject the interference in ultra wideband technology or ultra wideband transmitter receiver or specifically ultra wideband antenna we need to make the antenna in such a way that it should be capable for rejecting the for rejecting the unwanted interference of other wireless technologies available uh, with that one then here uwb properties is there then finally then key component of that uwb is the antenna as well as filter then finally then uwb systems are prone to interference due to some existing technology that shares the frequency band within the uwb regulation system and now come to that one like how to how to overcome the challenge of that interference that is that one traditional solution for that one is that we need to design an antenna uwb it is cascaded with an uh, band stop filter specifically which band we are going to reject in that uh, uh, technology in that wireless technology and if we add these two then finally that is band notch ultra wide band and antennas with the, uh, earlier means uh, around 2002 to 2006 seven people used to make these two separate things and try to interconnect them through some hardware or through two different components that was ultimately increasing the size of that system then people start thinking that is it feasible to incorporate the filter characteristic within that uwb antennas then uh, keeping that questions in mind several solutions have come initially into the market that uh, ultimately yes it is feasible it is possible to incorporate the filter filter characteristic within that uwb antennas then ultimately different techniques have come into the market then these are these have been summarized here band notch uwb antenna then slotted geometries parasitic stubs then open-ended stuff then again slotted geometries that slots may be incorporated on the radiating plane in the ground plane on the feeding line structures then these are the one uh, classification of creating the uh, ultra wideband antennas with band notch characteristic apart from this because these are having certain numbers of drawback in terms of complexity and other forms then another another solution for creating the band notch characteristics came in the form of using the 
electromagnetic band gap is structure EBG structure on in short now come to that one <clears throat> how EBG structure journey starts into the market it, it was started long back by an Indians Jagdish Chandra Bose in 1890s then uh, 1890s but ultimately at that period of time limited resources were available for experimental verification that's why people have not accepted that one later on in 1980s and 90s because of availability of experimental facilities and several advancement in the antenna technologies or in the electromagnetic forms then people again started taking interest in that one and then they have they have analyzed this uh, artificial magnet artificial periodic structure in the form for different microwave radar absorbers specifically and several other applications nowadays this technique uh, like artificial periodic structure or what we call that in other words as the material have been widely used in several applications nowadays now i am picking up that one application that is antenna engineering or antenna design where i am going to discuss the specifically one class of artificial periodic structure that is EBG materials or EBG structures and its applications in antenna design if we see the comparison that it is like meta materials can be classified into single negative materials double negative materials where single negative material whether either epsilon or mu are negative then both here here in double negative material both epsilon and mu negative in negative refractive index material either n1 or n2 that is reflection coefficient first or second reflection coefficient will be negative here this ebg materials is also a periodic structure artificial periodic structure or a specific class of material which is having a different characteristic which is not uh, matching with these three uh, different category of materials which is the first one is the band gap feature and second one is the in phase reflection they think these two features are inherent features in the tbg materials but artificial period like structures and we will take the advantage of these features to enhance or to enhance the performance of antenna system or to enhance the uh, performance of antenna designed antenna as well as to reject the interference in the ultra wideband antennas then come to that one like uh, basically periodic structure or periodic materials is uh, that is periodic arrangement of dielectric or material basic ebg structure basically is a periodic arrangement of dielectric or, meta or metallic elements in one two or three dimensional manner first simplest way is the one dimensional structure and most complicated is the three dimensional structure then photonic structure photonic crystals with forbidden energy gap for light emissions were proposed that is again the going to the uh, classical way of uh, that uh, initial stage of the tvg structure then some the areas of dialectic and wood pile structure were reported later in 90s two different structures have come in the popular form that is one mushroom like ebg structure as i have uh, told you that the ebg structure is basically the periodic arrangement of metallic strip or the dielectric strip dielectric material if we see this one here this dark shaded area is the dielect is the metal and this light shaded area is the dielectric if we see this one that it is looking that one light shaded area light shaded surface is there on which some uh, uh, dark shaded uh, patches or strips are placed at a particular fashion or keeping the distance equal from one element to another element that is basically if you see this one that is uh, the metallic surface is in discontinuous in nature and uh, but the dielectric surface is in continuous in nature then if we see this is basically the mushroom like ebg structure then come to that one uniconductor ebg structure that is this, this or in other words you may call this one that a unicon unidielectric ebg structure here uniconductor ebg structure if you see this one that again a light shaded area is the dielectric which is in discontinuous in nature like you see this one this is having one element up to this one then second element is this one but if you see this dark shaded area that is having one single conductor in different different shapes moving from one place to another place that's why we are calling it unique conductor ebg structure the first one is the unidielectric ebg structure and the second one is the uniconductor ebg structure <clears throat> here like one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional ebg structure just a, a view of how to represent the so one two three dimensional ebg structure this is basically a uh, 
practical example of that micro strip line strip line basically where length is higher than to width and ultimately when the specifically the transmission line which we consider as a one dimensional structure electromagnetic structure and to like to create the perform different characteristic within the transmission line we use the one dimensional image structure then come to that uh, surfaces it is two dimensional surface that is basically having x x axis some elements and y axis some element that is basically two dimensional surface uh, three dimensional surface and depending upon the applications we use either first 1d 2d or 3d form of EBG structures as far as analysis or characterization of EBG structure is concerned these three methods are very much popular for creating for identifying the band gap between the uh, between one band to another band that is the first one is the dispersion diagram which is ultimate in the second one is the transmission coefficient frequency versus transmission coefficient here wave number k versus frequency plot is there and third one is the reflection phase which is also used for identifying the band gap, amount of band gap uh, between the two bands that is uh, frequency versus phase reflection uh, reflection phase in degrees uh, that one these three methods are used for identifying in the identifying the band gap structure of uh, identifying the basically the band gap now come to that one <coughs> how because uh, if i go back to that slide where i have classified the artificial structure of metamaterials into single negative double negative and then finally i have come to the that image structure where i have I have written to uh, a specific property in phase reflection and the phase reversal property that is ultimately these two properties here I am trying to uh, give you the ideas that how these properties are advantageous for us then first one is that ultimately it is it is an antenna structure where this one is the ground plane and at uh, uh, less than lambda by four distance one antenna elements is placed ultimately what will happen when we excite this antenna due to this distance short distance then one part of energy will travel into this direction and another part will travel into this direction due to this short range ultimately minimum distance between the ground plane and that antenna radiating element should be lambda by four then ultimately what is happening here that the resultant uh, radiation is in destructive nature because an energy a part of energy is being cancelled from left side to that right side radiation come to that one pc ground plane lambda by four ultimately if we keep this distance lambda by four then ultimately uh, and then this Effective means that reverse uh, reverse sided electromagnetic spectrum is again uh, re again reverse back to that uh, constructive side or that right hand side in interpenetrating. Ultimately, that energy back side energy is come into the forward direction and which ultimately enhance the radiation feature. But ultimately, it is feasible only when when you are maintaining a distance of lambda by four between the ground plane and the radiator. Then ultimately. <laughs> this is this is the thing now come to that figure d ultimately what we need to, what we have done here here we have created a high impedance surfaces using ebd structure that is these are the periodic elements placed at a uh, placed using the certain rules uh, from the of keeping the distance and size of that one then ultimately if we see this one then it is the distance between this high impedance surfaces is very very small as compared to lambda that is ultimately by taking this one or by replacing this ground plane ground plane here in, in figure one and b by this high impedance surfaces then ultimately it it gives the same behavior what we are getting in figure b at the distance of lambda by four but here the size has been drastically reduced another advantage by using this high impedance surfaces is to that it is uh, it is capable of reducing the surface wave because what what happens actually when we excite an antenna antenna by using some source then a part of energy travels from into the space into this direction and a part of energy ultimately within through through this dielectric surface then like like you see this one through the surface of that one then ultimately at the certain instant of time at that certain points then ultimately these two energies will cancel to each other ultimately then ultimately if we are not handling the effect of surface wave properly then uh, what will happen that the performance of the antenna will degrade that's why it is the uh, it is the uh, solution 
given in the form of image structures to remove the effect of surface wave or to uh, to eliminate or to reduce the effect of surface wave that is ultimately these two things comes into the picture that, that's why figure eight figure b is basically it's very very small as compared to figure a b ultimately for creating uh, for for better improve better performance here some like mathematical equations have been taken to just to give the idea of how the phase reversal will come into the picture. In phase reflection using EVG structure is this one that is the surface wave and intrinsic impedance of that and surface wave reduction using EVG structure that is well known ZS for TM transverse magnetic and transverse electric mode in this form. Then surface wave of the textual metal surface without an ABG is given in this one if we solve these equations for a specific uh, geometrical view of that antenna or using ABG structure then we will realize that finally we are getting the in phase reflection of uh, in in phase reflection and finally uh, the performance of that antenna is enhanced now come to that uh, one that here ultimately how the EPG structure uh, behaves mathematically what happens actually if we see this reason what is happening here here it is a metal here it is a dielectric if you see this reason only this reason there one metal is there another metal is there both are separated from a dielectric uh, material then ultimately one capacitance will be formed here then another capacitance will be formed here another capacitance will be formed here here these these is strips this is strip small metallic strips will give you the inductive effect that's why some capacitance some inductance will come into the pictures <laughs> that's why uh, it's uh, equivalent like this part equivalent rlc circuit is given here but amount of inductance and capacitance will be obtained for that one in this reference paper that we have picked up these equations that we can calculate the effect of total capacitance and total inductance in this one and ultimately if we finally if we, if we go into the detail of that resonance characteristic that f equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of lc which is having which is highly dependent on inductance and capacitance within the tbg unit cell that's why uh, here ultimately what has what we have done this is our own results the, which we have created for the CBD units. So because later on, I am going to use this one for further applications in the antenna designs. Then ultimately, this is the ADS equivalent circuit of this one. Then based on this RLC component, we have created the ADS uh, circuit equivalent circuit into ADS. Then it's the performance its performance in black color she mentioned here, which is compared to the electromagnetic simulations of the CBD unit cell. Then finally, more or less it is matching. It means what is happening that what electronic, uh, what equivalent circuit we have drived for this particular EBG unit cell, it is more or less matched into the electromagnetic simulation. That is the advantage. That is basically the initial steps for taking the advantage for 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 doing the things in the form of EBG structures. Now come to that one. That same things in four different ways. Ultimately, uh, this this is the initial EBG unit cells, which was the reference in the previous slide. That is the first extension of this one. Then same EBG unit cell second extension. Do you just see how it is like? Ultimately, here this copper surface is again modified in terms of this one. Then to create the another effect of inductance and capacitance. Then again, it is further modified in this form and in this form like this this and this this these are our own designed ebg unit cells which are giving you a like compact form of ebg unit cell as compared to this one as compared to this one here this this unit cell is in compact form to this unit cell this unit cell is also in in compact form to this unit cell this also in compact form of this one and finally unit cell 3 is also in as compared to this one the detailed analysis of this EBG structure, EBG unit cells only that you can find out in these two reference papers, which are our own published work on this EBG, uh, detailed analysis of this EBG structure for uh, stable resonance. Then come to that one, ultimately just the results form. And the, here, dispersion diagram analysis of these four unit cells. What four unit cells? This, this four. One, two, three, and four. Then ultimately, 
one, two, three, four. If we summarize this uh, graphical form into tabular form, then what is happening in the reference form? It the same size was there. Ultimately, seven point two to ten point four gigahertz. Then three point two gigahertz band was there here. That band is reduced to this one, and bandwidth is also then different level of compactness we have achieved in between. That is just one comparison from uh, reference to that unit cell four. The reference to unit cell one. The reference to unit cell 2 reference to unit cell 3 that you can compare yourself now <clears throat> after uh, observing the uh, different things related to ebg structure here are some common very common applications of ebg structures in antenna engineering that it, it is used like ebg structures are being widely used for creating the low profile antennas high gain or high directivity antennas then reconfigurability is also possible the mutual coupling reduction band noise characteristic bandwidth etc then ultimately in this presentation or in this talk i'm going to focus only these two applications remaining part is that we can uh, uh, we we will be going to touch side by side but a detailed discussion on these two topics uh, will come into the remaining part of the slides that is first one is the band noise characteristic and ultra wide band antenna second one is the performance enhancement using ebg structures <clears throat> if we see the existing literature what is happening here that for bandwidth improvement different uh, methods of ebgs have been used in the literature that ebg approach then planar circular symmetric around page then as a ground plane then stacked ebg multi period ebg on the ground plane unipolar uniplanar uniplanar ebg uh, artificial magnetic conductor then magneto dielectric material as an ebg substrate these are the different techniques which are being used till now for bandwidth improvement then come to the second performance parameter that is gain improvement using ebg structure ebg structure as a ground plane below the page ebg around the page holes in dielectric holes in a uh, ground plane is super uh, super straight uh, about the ground plane the matter material super straight and ebg structure these are the different uh, number of papers which are based on that specific techniques anyone we can pick up for taking the reference for our own work then dual band and multi band is also possible multi band characteristic is also possible in ebg using ebg structure then these are the different method and come to that band noise characteristic which i am going to discuss in detail here that is these two techniques um, band noise characteristic using ebg structure then both sides of the field line single side of the field line then <clears throat> low profile ebg structures or uh, ebg structured antenna are also designed into the literature that these are the different technique dual triple dual layer single layer ebg structures for creating the low profile antenna then ultimately compactness is also achieved using ebg structure for that this reference is given to you if you are interested to explore your skills in this specific area of ebg structures in antenna engineering then you need to go to this beautiful uh, uh, review articles of uh, around 150 articles article articles within that limited page of 15 15 number of pages is having the beautiful summary of all the 15 100 100 more than 100 papers based on the different kinds of uh, different kinds of that one Uh, features enhancement using ebg structure now come to that one like uh, ebg structure like this this part i have discussed in detail in previous few slides now come to that one modeling part specifically those folks who are interested in doing some mathematical part then for that one two types of modeling approach for ebg structures are used one is analytical method second one is numerical method now it is we are we are exploring ourselves for the researcher working in the specific area of ebg structures are exploring their skills only in the numerical method because that was the traditional way several advantage several drawbacks are there with this method with this specific class of modeling method analytical modeling but here several real the problems have been overcome by using that uh, computer simulation computer based simulation and several other aspects that is uh, like come to that one numerical modeling numerical modeling means ultimately these three methods are very much popular for modeling of ebg structures using fdtd the method of moment finite element method it is a few steps for creating the fdtd modeling for ebg structure the time domain discretization is used first one then we apply the boundary condition 
excitation the excitation of the unit cell then finally we compute the field cell radiator from that unit cell then in this one discretization and then ultimately the discretization is represented in the form of integral equation then integral equations are solved in the form of matrix matrix form using computer programming or that by writing few lines codes in the matlab or some c language or some other platform uh, language platform then discretization interpolation solution for the system equation these are the three common steps which are used for applying the finite element method for if it is text some uh, like summary of these three advantage three methods uh, in context of that the image structures that uh, ultimately uh, each one is having its own advantage and drawback that we know to discuss here that like first one is the time domain approach second frequency domain frequency domain and ultimate slowest and in, in inherently faster slower as compared to method of moment complexity less complex uh, method is there of dtd then more complex more complex because of that integral form of equations and complicated form of that uh, equations basically then uh, advantage is broadband characteristic efficient for open reason problems then efficient for irregular geometries uh, disadvantage is like a small spatial and time space uh, <coughs> time step iterations are required then green functions are difficult for complicated geometry sparse matrix results in homogeneity and non linearity like as far as uh anyway that, uh, here ultimately uh, you see that one that how the total literature enhanced literature of the numerical methods are there then ultimately up to 16 in 2016 because due to shortage of time i could not uh, upgrade this one up to 2020 then ultimately up to 2020 then analytical methods and uh, was having quite peak but later on in last couple of years you see if 2016 to 20 the one another slabs if you see then this this uh, bluish color will be very small and these are quite high fdtd and method of moment based uh, uh, techniques these are quite high in that in 2016 to 2020 uh, literature which is like uh, if you see that one then ultimately uh, uh, that uh, as your moderator has already pointed out that one book on that interference cancellation using ebg structure uh, in ebg antenna in sorry in uwb antenna which is going to be published in february 2021 then you can take a uh, comprehensive summary on these techniques in that book come to that one that is uh, like some example samples based on that first approach band noise ultra wideband antennas using ebg technologies then in that one two different parts i'm going to cover first one is the fixed band noise ultra wideband antennas using ebg structure and second one is the reconfigurable band noise ultra wideband antennas in part one four different examples dual noise uwb antennas triple noise uwb antennas quad noise uwb antennas and penta noise uwb antennas in part 2 that is uh, one example for switchable triple band noise characteristic in uwb antenna and example 6 is basically that is tunable triple band noise characteristic in uwb antenna so triple or tunable triple noise to uwb antenna then part uh, approach 2 will come that two different examples i'm going to discuss in under approach 2 uh, for performance enhancement using fss frequency selective surface which is basically the extension of ebg unit cell now <clears throat> one by one that is approach 1 part 1 fixed band noise characteristic that is the first if you like uh, if you, i go back to that one here you see dual noise triple noise quad noise pentano noise. in four different geometry in four different example like ultimately the reference uwb antenna geometries i have taken in different forms that first we need to design the reference uwb antenna which is giving the ultra wideband characteristic of 3.1 to 10.6 gigahertz then ultimately we need to incorporate the effect of dual noise triple noise quad noise pentano noise in that one that is here if you see this one few basic uwb antenna design which i have included in my own presentation that the first one second one third one and fourth one if you see this one then all these designs are having a partial ground plane uh, 
like first one is having a different feeding that is coplanar waveguide feeding and second one is the microstip feeding then ultimately second microstip feeding microstip feeding first one is the coplanar waveguide feeding then both these two methods these two these two feeding techniques are very much popular these two feeding techniques are very much popular for designing the ultrawide band antennas now the uwb characteristic ultrawide band characteristic is basically defined in terms of this gap which which you are seeing in this encircled gap in all this for geometry no matter what type of or what shape of radiator you are using here it is a different kind different shapes of radiator here it is different than electrical shape here ultimately it is a entirely different uh, first three first three are based on microstip radiator microstip patch radiator and this one is the yellowish color is the feeding structure and that reddish color is the dielectric resonator DRA. DRA is used as the radiator element here. The different optimized geometries are mentioned here. The first one is based on that. Uh, that is RT duroid material of 2.2 relative permittivity. Here it is FR4 and FR4. Then ultimately that is the dielectric material. Here FR4 is used for the ground plane. And ultimately that the dielectric resonator of uh, that is K10 material with dielectric uh, permittivity is 9.8. Which is used here for designing that uh, entire design. <clears throat> now come to that one that example one dual nosed uwb antenna it means it is having an inherent characteristic of ultra wideband antennas with with additional characteristic of rejecting two notches one is at 3.4 gigahertz s band y max and second one is 6.9 gigahertz that is c band inset in indian national satellite communication now here design step by step designs are given here that is antenna one antenna two antenna three antenna four antenna one is basically is giving the ultra wideband characteristic of 3.1 to 10.6 or 10.7 gigahertz later on we'll see the exact values of that band then in uh, at the time of discussion of result and here one notch characteristic of 3.4 gigahertz is coming because of that pie shaped slot and another notch characteristic is uh, we have introduced by taking a pair of ebg unit cell which i have already discussed i have taken that already optimized ebg unit cell uh, in the previous slides and that i used here for giving the band notch characteristic in this one then if i incorporate if we i if i combine these two antenna 2 and antenna 3 then finally we are getting the finally optimized geometry of antenna 4 that is optimized design optimized design in that one like the detailed uh, geometrical description of the pie shaped slot is given here then different dimensions of this ebg unit cells are there why this ebg unit cell ultimately is the unipolar ebg unit cell on back side no structure is there yeah. only one side on top side and this design is used here and this material this and overall geometry is designed using rt duroid material of 2.2 dielectric permittivity and 0.762 mm thickness and then uh, ultimately these different uh, dimensions optimized dimensions and the pie shape slow dimension with the unit cell dimension now come to that results part it is ultimately the design the design is basically to reject the 3.4 gigahertz and 6.9 gigahertz if you see this uh, radiation uh, Current pattern surface current distribution at four different frequency 3.4 is undesired form if you see the intensity of this current that is entire amount of current is retained within the phase it is not going to be radiated in the space and ultimately same thing is happening for this one but ultimately in between in between that 5.5 gigahertz and 9 gigahertz these are the desired band which are not having the high amount of density within that surface it means that entire things is being radiated into the surface space in that one here the fabricated prototype of this particular design is there then comparison performance comparison in terms of vsw or voltage standing wave ratio comparison uh, that is frequency versus vsw or comparison of four antenna one two three four like if you see antenna one which is not having any notch characteristic but antenna four is having 12 notch which is marked as a red color here here like simulated and measure performance of antenna four because antenna four is the final optimized one this one and you see that notch values are more or less to that part simulated value but there is a slight variation in the 
measured and simulated performance that might be because of that connector loss and that amount of solder wasted for connecting that one as well as to the some human errors at the time of doing the fabrication as well as measurement of that one come to that one gain performance comparison for the same design at this particular frequency of 3.4 to 6.9 gigahertz if you see the amount of gain that is very small ultimately it is not that it is not going to be a efficient radiator at this frequency all the amount all the energies are, are not going to be radiated at this particular frequency rest of the band reasonable amount of gain is there <coughs> rest of the frequency range come to that uh, like radiation patterns for that one these are all are working efficient working frequency 3.2 gigahertz is the working frequency 5.5 gigahertz is the working frequency 9.3 gigahertz is the working frequency h plane patterns and e plane patterns which is having measured and as well as simulated uh, simulated uh, co and cross polarization of that proposed design that if you see this one that more or less all the values are matching to that one and uh, come to that next one that is performance comparison of this design with the existing literature that it is based on that coplanar waveguide field pi shift slot and unipolar epg is used here which is giving you a dual characteristic and this work was published in that particular journal au international journal of electronics and communication come to that second example that is example two triple nose characteristic here the entire things step by step no need to be discussed in detail because the intermediate steps are common to all type of uh, designs ultimately come to that one here <clears throat> the behavior of this gbg unit cell how it is changing then ultimately if you see uh, like look wise antenna four five six are looking same but it is not there here ebg unit cell is different shapes ebg unit cell is there that later on in next slide i'm going to discuss that one a different unit cell is there here ultimately uh, one kind of ebg unit cell left and right side of this feeding structure is there another kind of ebg unit cell like ebg2 on left and right side here ebg1 on left and right side here ebg1 on left side and ebg2 on the right side this particular combination is giving me this type of rejection that is 4.5 gigahertz in set and 5.1 gigahertz w line and 9.1 gigahertz uh, radio allocation frequency band in that one <clears throat> just see this one it is, it is ebg1 then ultimately uh, how how it is different to that one that this inter that this this inductance is removed here to create the resonance of that different frequency then ultimately by taking this abg unit one it is giving you a dual band dual band with abg unit one but ultimately if if we take this one abg unit cell two it is giving us two one one band if we combine these two then triple band triple band notch characteristic we are getting here and the simulated performance of that VSWR versus frequency gain versus frequency that we can visualize here in antenna 1 to antenna 6 and finally antenna 6 is best possible design for that particular application which is giving an ultra wide band characteristic of 2.4 to 10.65 gigahertz band here same thing means ultimately that uh, uh, blockage of current and that notch frequency and radiation patterns uh, E plane pattern, H plane patterns, and three working frequency. That is that one. Then come to that quad band, notched ultra wide band antennas using uh, slots and EBG unit cell. Here, the design how it is different. The two unit two pi shape slots are used here for creating dual band. Then two pi shape uh, two two uh, one pair of EBG unit cell is used for creating the uh, another two bands of frequency, notch frequency. Then here, dielectric material that is R radiated material 0.762. More like EBG unit cell is same, same thing. That is either, either a new unit cell 1, 2, 3, 4, which I have discussed in the early part of this presentation. Then <coughs> with the same EBG unit cell is used. The detailed description is not possible to discuss here because that was already uh, described in that. Uh, two reference articles which i have highlighted at the time of that presentation at the time uh, at the time of presenting that particular slide then same ultimately ab antenna one two three four performance comparison that is one uh, ultimately four is giving us the four most band at this frequency then radiation surface current distribution then fabricated prototype measured simulated performance comparison of that one that is 
uh, gain com gain performance comparison of this uh, thing then come to that one pentanos uh, ebg structures you will be antennas that is basically uh, is going to reject the five different uh, bands all are standards band that is 2.6 gigahertz lt band 4 gigahertz c band satellite downlink 5.5 gigahertz wlan and c 6.5 gigahertz C-band IEEE inset then 8.2 gigahertz X-band satellite uplink. Here ultimately antenna 1, 2, 3 up to antenna 8. This antenna 8 is has uh, is having the capability of rejecting these five bands. How it is designed basically this is antenna 1, 2, this, this one. Uh, if you compare this reference antenna, this one is the most simplest case of designing the UWB antenna. If you compare this one with earlier geometry, then ultimately this reason was further optimized for creating the UWB characters here. The task is to make it very simple on doing the several stages of uh, simulation part for making this uh, reference EBG structure, uh, reference UWB antenna very simple in that way. Now, ultimately, uh, one fork shape slot is incorporated here for creating one band. Then second fork is there. Then third uh, third fork was tried. We, we tried to incorporate the third fork, but ultimately it was uh, giving the restrictions of uh, which we usually encountered at the time of fabric fabrication because we are not having that efficient uh, fabrication facility which gives the uh, which gives the good results good uh, good kind of fabrication where the track size copper track size is less than 0.5 mm that's why we have restricted ourselves not to do not to incorporate third stage of fork shape of uh, fork shape of slots on that radiating surface instead of that one we try to in, uh, get the dual notch characteristic by using the appropriate by by using that one EBG unit cell here ultimate in earlier designs what was happening that all are symmetrical position one was at this minus in this axis and another was is for the positive on the same distance here ultimately we have we have uh, analyzed this reason and this reason also and we have uh, we have optimized the position at two asymmetrical uh, locations one is on this side another one is this side which is giving a specific <coughs> band of rejection ultimately now we go back to the back side of that one because ultimately on the back sides we are not having and ultimately on the back sides we are having this uh, partial ground plane on that partial ground plane we have incorporated that uh, that one that is complementary shape of this EBG unit cell because here this reason this part is the copper surface here it is not the copper surface it means here that whitish region is the copper surface and that's a dark shaded area is not the copper surface here ultimately in this particular case uh, this is this EBG unit cell is basically the complementary cement complementary structure of this one complementary this is structure means wherever copper is replaced the copper is there then copper surface is replaced with the dielectric one and the dielectric surface is replaced with the copper one but then ultimately uh, in that bottom side of EBG pair then ultimately we have uh, we have observed the mutual coupling mutual coupling between the cbg unit cells with the feed line then ultimately at this position one specific band of that frequency we have we are able to reject that one and in this particular same thing we have may we have observed by taking the reverse of this one and in this reverse case ultimately we are getting then two two notch characteristic here and then uh, three notch characteristic here and two notch characteristic here that is the total five band we have rejected for this particular design then ultimately we see the performance comparison of that one then it is that the proposed image unit cell that top view as well as bottom view of that one then antenna one two three four five six seven eight in terms of s11 comparison proposed image unit cells then s11 comparison ultimately that we can visualize uh, antenna four antenna here and four antennas here <laughs> here we are getting five nosed band at the central frequency of 2.6 gigahertz 4 gigahertz 5.5 gigahertz 6.5 gigahertz 8.2 gigahertz these are the some standard frequency if we compare this design with the existing one existing literature then ultimately 
the number of uh, stages, number of notched bands, it is first time that we have achieved five different bands, five different notched bands we have obtained here in this proposed design. And if you see uh, the overall size of the geometry, it is more, few papers are having lesser size, but the number of notched bands are very small. But here, slightly different, like this size is diff lower than to that one. Reference two, reference four, reference uh, seven also, but it is higher than to that reference say six, and reference three and reference one. But ultimately, if we see the capabilities of rejecting the band, then ultimately we need to take this one as a uh, advantageous one as compared to the existing literature. Now, <clears throat> that first one, first part, first part of that one is over. Now, sir. yes, please. Uh, can we go for a break, sir, for five or ten minutes? You want me? Uh, I think around um, ma'am around seven o'clock. I am having another meeting. That's why I decided to make it in continue. That uh, five ten minutes back, from uh, five ten minutes prior to that seven o'clock, I'll be going over that one. Okay, sir. If uh, if, not, if it is not needed, means you can continue. Sir, no problem. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Now the second approach. That is uh, approach uh, second. Band notch characteristic using uh, basically in, in previous all the cases what examples i have posed here in that one that nose frequency was fixed but uh, sometimes what happened due to some atmospheric problems or due to some problems arises in the transmitter as well as receiver that nose frequency will never be fixed it is going to be shifted within that band then ultimately our system or design that proposed one previously designed that becomes useless for that one keeping that thing challenges in that one we need to make that nose frequency reconfigurable reconfigurable ultimately two types of reconfigurability that we are going to discuss here one is the switchability second one is the tunability then these two characteristics are very much important as far as band notes characteristic in ultrawide band antenna is concerned and both the characteristics that we are going to be uh, incorporated here that if we see the literature existing literature on that one so switched notch band carrier antenna and tunable notch ultrawide band antennas then ultimately if there is a huge scope of ex ex expanding the research in this region because here no need to go into that one uh, that is basically the literature of 2015 to 20 last five years then ultimately here we very less is uh, very less literature is there and there is a great chance to enhance these reasons that's why we have taken the reference of this one triple nosed band triple band nose characteristic and we have tried to incorporate the uh, uh, reconfigurability in terms of switchable band nose characteristic and in terms of tunable band nose characteristic of that one now <clears throat> the same thing like uh, ultimately uh, uh, that reference UWB antennas is there, then uh, which, which is basically in this uh, one uh, ultimately triple triple U shape U shape slots are incorporated here. I are incorporated here for creating that triple notch first. This is giving me the triple band notch behavior. Then ultimately for making this one switchable, what we have done, we have incorporated three pin diodes here. Pin diode as a switch. As an on-off switch, that characteristic is being used here. That is basically uh, the overall design of this particular antenna is based on that FR4 material with 1.6 mm thickness and epsilon R permittivity that is 4.4 and low strength 0.02. That is basically the lossy substrate because uh, that one is not going to be used for any real real system development that's why we have in we have tested that one only at the uh, low cost material or lossy material fr4 once it is final then in second stage that we can announce that one for the some specific uh, design uh, some like uh, lossless material lossless substrate material to develop other materials for that one. these are the optimized optimized dimensions of this design and then uh, that is a uh, this one triple nose antenna then ultimately this uh, the descriptions of optimizing the dimension at the biasing voltage that i'm going to discuss here then step by step that is <clears throat> starting from uh, the ground plane length length of ground plane is basically this one what is go what is the performance is going to be changed by changing the length of this ground plane that is first one 
as equal to this one as equal to this one this three just for comparison otherwise uh, a huge range we have covered for making the this reason more uh, informative then that's why but it is giving the best result that for comparison purpose of for the limited space available in all the journals we have skipped the different stages and finally if we see that black one that is giving the best possible performance for us that is uh, ground plane uh, by increasing the ground plane ultimately from 11.1 to 15.1 it is that complete band of uwb is coming into which is our which is our desired then ultimately now uh, now finally what is happening here that the radiation radiator length is making a function of as parameter we have changed the different length and then finally we have observed the performance of this one and uh, at length of 16.5 we are getting the best possible performance in this one then <clears throat> by changing this one by changing the length what is happening here ultimately the overall uh, our uh, overall performance is shifted slightly shifted towards the right side from left to right then ultimately uh, it is uh, come to that one uh, radiator width that is wp in this one why is reverse reverse phenomena is coming that the entire thing is little bit shifting when we are changing the when we are changing the length of when we are changing the width of that radiator or in another words we can say that that the lower cut off frequency lower if you see this region that is somewhere in this region we are having the lower cut off frequency of that uwb antenna that lower cut off frequency is basically is changing is changing when we are increasing the length of this radiator and if you see this region and somewhere we are having that upper cut off frequency here it is more or less all the points are coming or connecting at the same location then ultimately this region is changing then by changing the width of that radiator ultimately we can tune the upper cut off frequency then a specific band a specific uh, point that we have fixed it that one wpp wp that is basically 12.2 here ultimately then again we have changed the performance of that one by changing the first u-shaped slot and it's so length is changing here then overall performance we can observe here that that is first notch behavior is changing by changing the length and second notch behavior by changing the length of this one then third notch behavior by changing the length if we combine these three then ultimately we get that uh, triple notch characteristic of that one then come to that one tune our switchability by making the switchability ultimately we have placed the three tube in diode as a just for just for that one just just for creating the on of switching ultimately then this is um, biased then some biasing voltage are applied for that one what amount of biasing is there then we will be going to discuss in next slide then ultimately if we see three diodes then three diodes can generate eight eight different stages that is stages one or case one case two case three case four five six seven eight all three diodes are on and here all three diodes are off if all three diodes are on then there is no meaning of these slots then ultimately this antenna is basically giving me the ultra wide band characteristic then ultimate then second one if you are making diode one off and remaining two diode on then we are getting <coughs> uwb characteristic along with the one band notch characteristic then ultimately if we see the third case then on off on then second band notch single band and notch characteristic single notch band along with that uwb and here also single band notch along with that one if we are making two diodes off then ultimately two band notch two notch band along with that uwb characteristic we are getting first second first third and second third if we are making all three diodes off then ultimately we are able to get the ultra wide band characteristic with the three band notch characteristic ultimately if we see this uh, performance uh, well, then in this uh, like uh, uh, multi we are getting here multifunctional characteristic that's why sometimes that switchable switchable triple band switchable uh, band notch switchable uwb antennas are also called the multifunctional antennas but multifunctionality we are getting then according to the requirement that we can tune that one for the original uwb range uwb range for single with single band notch characteristic uwb range with uh, dual band notch characteristic uwb range with the triple band notch characteristic that is the capability of this particular design now <clears throat> here ultimately that one uh, mathematical some mathematical derivation 
question uh, is there which is not i think required to be discussed here ultimately it will make the audience uh, like and will not be able to take that interest because of uh, uh, some complicated aspects and then come to that one finally it is uh, like five different notes that is each one is having that is the conclusion for that each one is having uh, that one uh, rlc equivalent circuit then rlc equivalent circuit second third fourth fifth ultimately then slot one slot two slot three slot then three different slots are having equivalent rlc circuit then uh, this this entire thing we have represented as z1 impedance that is z2 impedance then ultimately if you see this one then here rlc components are optimized that when f1 2.9 gigahertz then rlc values will be like this and a similar kind of behavior we are getting for second and third notch characteristic for that one this is the experimental validation or fabrication and experimental work for this particular design that is uh, HFS simulation equivalent circuit model measured equivalent circuit means that is what we what we have given that the mathematical model on previous slides then it's equivalent to that one and bluish color is the measured values then all three are uh, like uh, HFSs and equivalent circuits are perfectly matching but due to due to some problems at the time of fabrication of this prototype then it was not perfectly matching but ultimately the band was matching fully matching that's why we have kept that one as it is and then uh, <clears throat> because uh, at that period of time what what was happened to the us that uh, lockdown has already been started in march february march onward that's why all the students were asked to vacate the hostels immediately that's why we are not in a position to uh, defabricate that one but ultimately results were perfectly matching by doing by giving proper justification in different stages of reviewing process and finally it was it was uh, published uh, it was now it is online available and it was accepted in journal of electromagnetic waves and application taylor and francis in that one so now come to uh, and that radiation patterns for that one then ultimately gain performance that uh, you see the reddish color that is a reconfigurable nose band then very small amount of gains we are getting in that corresponding to these three frequencies then here existing literature comparison that we can see easily that it is having far better as compared to the existing one uh, 2021 20, 22 3, 4. now come to that one tunable tunability that is basically uh, again it uh, in previous design it was only having the characteristic of on off but ultimately on off is not a permanent solution also in several conditions that we need to tune ourselves we need to tune the frequency either left side or left side then that's the on off characteristic we can make only up to two stages if within that band so five six six stages are coming then ultimately it is very hard to incorporate an appropriate diode to make it on or off that's why we have <clears throat> come to incorporate that universal characteristic by by utilizing the effect of vector diode because vector diode when it is biased properly it gives the variable capacitance and in rlc circuit if c capacitance is varied then ultimately f can also be varied by changing the capacitance come to that one more or less that is a uh, that is a previous design but ultimately that a slot shape here it is uh, giving much better performance by taking that one modified u-shaped slot <laughs> that is uh, uh, that is what we call it that is csr a complement split ring resonator shape sir what is the <laughs> resistor that values for that pardon Sir, what is the resistor and capacity values for like uh, uh -huh. equivalent circuit of a reactor, sir? Reactor on, diode kind of. In 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 figure B. Yes, sir. Okay, that that is not possible to be given here because each if you see the data sheet, data sheet with this number, then you will find out the appropriate values of that one because from market, from market you will purchase this component with this value. That's it. That is the number. Okay. Okay, sir. sir, like in HFS, but, what is the value corresponding to the return that we can find out? Not in HFS, that will give uh, that will give you from the data sheet. Yes. Okay, but somewhere definitely in that reference, what uh, reference I am going to suggest to you in this published one, if you go through that paper, definitely you will get the corresponding RLC component values for this vector diode. Okay, okay, 
then <coughs> coming to that one that same things Hello? same step by step uh, sorry uh, sorry for interruption uh, like you said we are using varactors and capacitors here right for the switchability but yes, yes, uh, for yes. that also we will be using some biasing external biasing uh, for them right Yes. Would yes, that not yes, introduce yes, yes, more yes. interference and you know coupling in between? Uh, I mean, would it not couple with the the biasing circuit? Would it not couple with the main patch and you know change the performance? You 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 you're talking about in previous you example. Remember the I same example, like switchability. Right, right. We are using varactors and capacitors for the switchability, right? Uh, if we are, you know. Uh, uh, but yeah, to yeah, bias yeah. the capacitors, yeah, 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 yeah. we'll be using some external circuitry also, right? Yes. So would that circuitry not, you know, introduce uh, some uh, effects in the main patch? That's fine. That 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 effect is to be analyzed at the time of simulation. That that is there definitely. Yeah, I mean, in this paper, it is there. That analysis right, is because, there. Uh, that right, is not there. I think that would we we are designed. We did. We, yes. Ultimately, if you are going to mix DC with mm -hmm. AC, then definitely some problems will come. Mm -hmm. That's why some uh, specific like isolation kind of things that we need to incorporate, mm -hmm. which will isolate DC bias voltage with the operating AC signal. Otherwise, otherwise it will be a problem exactly. for us exactly. for interference. That that is handled carefully. That is that is that is that is and that, that is to be handled carefully in both the cases in vector diode as well as mm -hmm. the uh, pin diode. Because both are based on bias, some right. DC on the same like radiator or a part of that radiator, you are having some DC voltage, and on the as far as radiation is concerned, then which is going to be radiator, which is going to be received is the AC mm -hmm. signal. Definitely, it will create a problem of interference. That is to be. That's why biasing, biasing designing is critical. Mm -hmm. We need to spend. Uh, more times for designing the biasing part, picking up the specific vector diode or pin diode from the market, mm -hmm. or then you uh, place that one. Then that is not a solution. Exactly. Thank you, sir. So, and there is one more. Uh, this is uh, uh, in the previous slides we yes. talked about yes, the yes, length yes, of please. the ground plane, right? We can change the uh, performance uh, of the antenna by changing the length of the ground there, right? Okay. Where where. In which slide? Uh, so I think it was I don't remember the slides where we talked about you know we can change the uh -huh. uh, performance of the antenna by changing the length of we can increase the you'll change the length from some eleven point something to something I don't remember. Okay, okay, that is ready. Ready. So radiator, is radiator, there radiator, a particular for example one. obviously for yes, different sir. designs uh, the change would be different right for different yes, yes, yes. I mean yes, yes. so how yes, do we yes. decide like while designing the antenna how can we decide like what we have to keep the length of the ground or the optimal value I mean is there some mathematical <laughs> equation for that or it's just yes, the yes, parametric exactly. sleep yes if uh, for that one if I go back to the traditional uh, uh, like antenna like the ground plane is higher than to that pet uh, pet side it is universal fact mm -hmm. so, but uh, like what type, what kind of, what size of that ground plane should be there so that ultimately the performance of that antenna must be in the enhancement form. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time of like, uh, uh, ideally it should be infinite ground plane. Yes, okay. Otherwise when you are going to truncate, when you are going to truncate the ground plane either on x, x, x direction mm -hmm. or y direction, then again it will start creating a problem of fringing effect. Mm -hmm. That That's why to avoid that fringing effect, ultimately the size of that ground plane should be as high as possible but ultimately if you are taking a very large size of ground plane then yes. ultimately it is going to be very bulky or very uh, very large size antenna then ultimately it will not be use, useful for that one the overall size of presented a smartphone is limited to few centimeter by few centimeter but if you are going if you are applying the traditional way of uh, incorporating or designing or taking the ground plane size then ultimately that antenna size will be higher than to the overall pcb size of that uh, like uh, so that smartphone. means depending on the application we can check obviously yeah, yes, we can uh, yes, uh, ground, uh, yes, yes. there is no particular mathematical equation yes, it is, capping it is, on the ground size plane i mean there is no like it, you know the it, it is there that mathematical is there i'm coming to that one if, 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 yes yes uh, like if you go back to 1890s Mm -hmm. Then at that period of time, several mathematics have been tried successfully. Mm -hmm. I'm not able to recall the exact reference, but at least 19, several mathematical models are there to mm -hmm. uh, find out that one, to find out the amount of the, find out the size of ground plane. And more or less, it is coming to that one. That is, it is 2.5 to 3 times of the radiator patch. Mm -hmm. 
in the traditional way of antenna okay if we keep the ground plane size within that 2.5 to 3 times of that ground plane mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay three times of that radiator then ultimately it will give you the best possible performance it is not going to hamper the radiation characteristic of that one that is 2.5 to 3.5 2.5 to 3.5 as far as that uwb antenna is concerned then ultimately like like this one okay in, in this one this gap is very much important for creating the uwb characteristic because this is this gap is only responsible for creating the uwb characteristic nothing more than that that's why partial form of ground if you take this uh, fully uh, that one then ultimately it is very hard to get the ultra wideband characteristic that's why for making that one ultimately you need to play you need to play with this gap only for creating the uwb characteristic that's why how the performance is changing that depends only ultimately this gap that here only it is the rectangular gap rectangular sorry rectangular shape of that radiator originally if i go back to that one initial uh, initially somewhere in the presentation i have given you four different shapes of uwb radiator yes, this sir. one one was having truncated uh, rectangular shape then second one is this this type of shape uh, third was the elliptical shape and fourth was the uh, dielectric resonator shape but ultimately in all the all those type of design this gap was very much responsible for creating the uwb characteristic So that is the things only. That ultimately it will vary from design to design. Definitely, it will it will be the function of substrate permittivity also, and ultimately it it will be the function of that one. If we go into the depth of that one, then ultimately it will also be the function of that thickness of that copper strip. Mm -hmm. But because ultimately with the with the mm -hmm. amount of the thickness, uh, that amount of thickness of that copper strip will give you the concept of skin depth. If you are not yes, a tandem yes. So because uh, several times you need to uh, take that uh, according to our design that is skin uh, skin depth of that uh, copper strip so that is also there but ultimately as such my knowledge is concerned i cannot say that there is any specific uh, to the point mathematical model which give you the exact amount of ground plane that one so ultimately you. you need to Yes, thank you, ma'am. So one last question. I'm so sorry yes. to take your yes, time. Yes, yes, no, no uh, problem. Sir, uh, like we, for example, in one example, in example four, we said like you know we have had used two EBG unit cells there, uh, right? In one of the examples. Ex example four, okay. So in yes, such cases, carry on, if for example we have two okay. EBG unit cells, and since obviously they are close to each other, how would we, how do we take care of the interference between yes. them also? Like obviously yes, they'll yes, have yes. interference with the feed line, but yes, since yes, they are also periodic structures of metallic, yes, you know, yes, yes, they'll yes, be sir. having coupling between yes, them sir. also. Ultimately, uh, I need to go back to that one feeding step. Like like suppose for example this one, or prior to that, where simplest case we have used of that one, just placing in. Like for example, this one. This one is having its own resonance. Mm -hmm. This is also its own resonance. Right. Ultimately, okay. When you are placing to each other, mm -hmm. then ultimately it will give you the net coupling effect. Then some amount of frequency will be passed through this region, mm -hmm. and some amount of frequency will be rejected by this one because ultimately the behavior of this EBG structure is reverse to the behavior of the feeding lines. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why. that no no it means what is no ultimately that is pole if we see the uh, transfer function equivalent circuit of this type of antenna that is ultimately pole zero is concept infinite infinite impedance is coming at that particular point at the nose frequency which is going to be passed through that structure that is possible only when when that interference effect interference of this unit cells is more than to the interference of this uh, or coupling of this uh, feed lines that is possible only when if it is lesser than to then definitely that uh, that particular frequency will pass through the surface and it will starts to radiate uh, sir i'm talking about the coupling between two ebg structures two ebg units okay, okay okay yes yes ultimately this uh, this yes yes this this gap is also very much important mm -hmm. this gap because that thing it is not nowhere i have in this presentation i have incorporated but ultimately in some other publications that that is there the deep analysis of this one okay. that what what kind of conclusion we can come across so according to that gap between the ebg unit cells mm -hmm. or this gap like it is symmetrical gap basically mm -hmm. Yes, both sides. You, sides. Then, then ultimately, you can play with the asymmetrical kind of gap. That here it is different gap, and here it is a different gap. That kind of uh, uh, like 
prediction you can find out using some other techniques that that is not possible to be discussed here because nowhere that reference is there in my presentation okay, okay. thank you so much sir thank you okay. so much thank you ma'am thank you uh, should i go ahead with that remaining part of or what is your uh, okay okay thank you thank you tunable form the same like uh, fabrication and that one uh, like <coughs> effect of that biasing voltage on the capacitance that line uh, some of the participant has asked that one ultimately here we cannot say the components what what is the component and values of the equivalent circuit ultimately it is coming in the form of that capacitance final uh, that impedance basically what you are calling that if you see this one if we calculate the net impedance and plot that values then ultimately it will comes in the form of frequency here uh, like but you see by applying the twice voltage zero volt then we are getting a capacitance of 1.24 picofarad for example because c equal to q upon v if we take the that relationship ultimately then by changing the voltage we can find out the uh, different if we can change the capacitance of that one and that variable capacitance if we are placing in a rlc circuit then ultimately the resonance frequency will be shifting either towards left side or towards the right side that is uh, that one the same like different different stages for the d1 d2 d3 that we have analyzed here because uh, of time constraint that because it is very hard to deliver as well as to listen a continuous talk of two hours i know sure this is my first experience because i can i can visualize that uh, pain on both the sides but ultimately we have to do that one any anyway, next 15 minutes hardly i'll take to finish that uh, limit thing part of that and the radiation patterns and finally simulated versus measured performance comparison with that one existing literature then i need to discuss it that one and this is most uh, now it is online available in april 2020 it was accepted now it is online available interested participants can go through that one then come to that one <clears throat> that is a beautiful uh, summary of that uh, review uh, of the band noise characteristic and ultraviolet band antenna see this one that this uh, summary of that all techniques available to date then ultimately that you can visualize in this review articles then different different techniques uh, till now what people have used to or have proposed for creating the band noise characteristic in ultraviolet band antenna in continuation to that one one uh, that book is also going to be published in february 2021 that is uh, band notch that is a uh, interference cancellation in ultra wide band antennas with crc taylor and francis now come to that conclusion for that existing literature that single band notch characteristic till now that this reference literature 11 to 77 papers and the reference number are there which have been used till now for this wmax wn x band others application then 12 band notch characteristic this one then triple notch characteristic this specific then according to your interest of application then you can pick up a specific uh, particular papers by using this table <coughs> then to that one other or quad quad or multi band multi band notch characteristics then reconfigurability then finally this is this review article is having a summary comprehensive discussion on that one uh, around 100 more than 100 papers within a limited uh, page number of 15 so that one uh, come to that uh, second part of that one that is having hardly two a different example but prior to that i need to be discuss uh, some little bit details of frequency selective survey like in previous uh, six different examples we have to consider the performance improvement either in terms of that single band noise trouble mag noise trouble band noise or like that by using a single ebg unit cell but apart from that one i have in one of the slides i have clearly mentioned that several applications are there in ebg of of using ebg structure but here ultimately we need to enhance the performance characteristic of that antenna no matter whether it is in uh, apart from that basically uwb antenna then ultimately we need to create a two dimensional surface 
of EBG unit cell. Then two-dimensional surface, if we are considering of EBG unit cell, then it becomes a frequency selective surface. Then two kinds of frequency selective surfaces I am going to discuss here. That is single single frequency selective surface and dual frequency selective surface. Here ultimately, if you see this one, that was the EBG unit cell which I picked up that already discussed uh, four different EBG unit cell. Then we have converted this EBG unit cell in the form of arrays, three into three arrays. That is ultimately a uh, frequency selective surface. Just ultimately this size, uh, this is very much limited in size, but it is going to be the three times of that size. Well, because different reflecting surface, different uh, super state, different uh, uh, reflector planes that we need to <clears throat> sorry, we need to design using the CBG concept that is going to be discussed here. That ultimately, that is uh, the simulation setup that we are, uh, which we through that one, we can identify the performance of this one. That is, if we see this, the transmission coefficient of this one for the four different unit cells, unit cell one, two, three, four. What unit cell unit one, two, three, four that I already discussed a uh, uh, few slides back, few weeks in the starting part of the presentation. Same unit cell one, two, three, four. And ultimately, that is the magnitude of the S11 and S21. And if you see this one, S11, that is having a specific uh, a specific uh, resonance. That is uh, 6.4 or 6.3, something like that. Ultimately, the same kind of resonance was there with this single unit cell. But ultimately, what advantage we are getting here, that if we need to use that single unit cell as a reflector or as a super state, then it is very hard to to be messed with the performance of that antenna because the size of antenna size of that antenna now without uh, super state or without reflector plane will be higher than to the size of that one EBG unit cell that's why for making it compatible with the existing size of that antenna that's why it, it is it is used uh, in the form of arrays that 3 by 3 array or 12 by 12 array in the next example we have extended this capabilities into 12 by 12 array then ultimately s21 performance that you can see here how for different subset material that transmission coefficient is changing but but uh, as is the <clears throat> transmission coefficient is uh, reducing like epsilon r is reducing from 4.3 to 3.2 to 2.1 then ultimately that resonance peak is shifting from left side to right side that is the conclusion here for t more than ultimately resonance stability is the main criteria because when you are using this uh, uh, frequency selective surface as a reflector plane or as a super strict then ultimately as it is not hard and fast tool that the uh, radiations will come only at the zero degree angle it may come in the at the 90 degree it may come at the 45 degree it may come at the uh, 30 degree or 35 degree or 50 degree 60 degree like that ultimately we need to be uh, careful about the stability in the resonance on the different angle of incidence that, that performance is analyzed here in tm as well as in te mode that if we see this peak this peak is very much important for us that is similar what we are getting in the previous case that it is not going to be changed but ultimately in both the cases but rest of the parts is changed ultimately the resonance peak remains stable here at the on different different angle of incidence now come to that one that is a further analysis the complement is met. this is the complete earlier that black that red uh, that white part was the copper surface and this uh, uh, this part was the dialectic surface now we have taken the reverse of that one by taking that reverse of that one ultimately several advantage will come into the picture by using the complementary form of frequency selective surface unit cell that uh, its performance is here that is proposed one and the uh, complemented one like more or less that uh, resonance characteristic is same now come to that one uh, that is double layer, double FSS layer, like two layers, two FSS layers are there between some air, between some air gap. That air gap is optimized here. Ultimately, air gap H1, here frequency selectives are for different uh, dielectric constant 4.3 and then 3.2 and 2.2 for ultimately uh, uh, like conclusion for this reason, for this reason it is not possible to be discussed in detail here because it is already uh, now come to that one <clears throat> here ultimately it is 12 by 12 uh, a zoomed version of this one is placed here 
zoomed version of this one uh, frequency selected surface is placed here because otherwise originally it was in this form then at, uh, then uh, this is the measurement setup of that one then finally its performance uh, single layer and double layer for that one then come to that uh, to the how how this surface will be useful for enhancing the performance that is to be discussed in next uh, <laughs> two example because prior to that the basic fundamentals of fss fss surface was to be required to discuss the fss properties of pbg sticks then fss property shows that the dimension of unit cell is only that single unit cell uh, at the operating frequency on fr for thickness one the dual fss layer indicates wide band with faster roll of uh, frequency analysis on uh, designed fss is also valid in fabricating then now the performance of page antenna using fss as a super state above the ground plane is to be discussed the performance now <clears throat> come to that one this is the reference any 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 kind of uh, radiator that you can use here but ultimately we need to improve the performance of this radiator of this antenna using fss frequency selective surface now come to that one by this is the traditional mathematics for defining the length and width of that uh, particular patch antennas for in terms of frequency here uh, three different antennas are designed that we have represented as case one case two case three by changing the dimensions then again uh, finally you can get the different amount of resonance it is resonating the case one is resonating at 5813003 gigahertz case 2 is resonating at 1.6 gigahertz and case 3 is resonating 9.28 gigahertz these three cases are used just for the comparison nothing more than that now come to that one that ebg unit cell basically single unit cell that we have picked up then its optimized dimensions are here then finally its performance that you need not to be discussed in detail because we have already covered that uh, analysis of the tbg units now come to that one ebg like uh, this is basically that antenna geometry and above that we have loaded a super state fss super state above that ground plane and this air gap is optimized according to that uh, some formulation mathematical formulation which is available in the existing literature then finally in three different cases we are getting three kinds of the three different values of optimized resonant uh, optimized air gap that is 19.8 in first case and 17.2 in second case and 14.6 uh, in third case then reflection phase that you can observe here then calculated the dielectric reflection phase is this one then come to uh, 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 finally case one case two case three deep analysis for that one uh, in terms of each variations in the length and uh, same kind of variation in the case one with fss case 2 with fss case 3 with fss and ultimately directivity 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 comparison here deflection coefficient variations in case 1 case 2 case 3 with fss and here directivity comparison with that one now you see that how it is changing uh, in the three different cases uh, that is ultimately case 1 case 2 case 3 <coughs> reflection coefficient then uh, ultimately with and without fss surface that you can visualize here then ultimately directivity is also case one case two case three here if we take the reference of this case one that is bluish color that re its resonance is around 9.25 or something exact value that i'll be going to tell you next one if it is mentioned there then ultimately its corresponding uh, peak value that this is the peak value of that directivity that is ultimately if you see this uh, point then uh, it is case one without uh, case uh, case one without FSS and case two without FSS uh, and like any any comparison that you can see here uh, case three blue and uh, uh, dark blue and dotted blue this one this reason in terms of numerical it will be clear that what amount of uh, uh, changes we are getting in this one the fabricated prototype then it is there right in the form of table fs where is that oh, that slide is missed otherwise uh, like uh, around 5 db directivity enhancement we are getting here in this particular design example here in this one by placing fss uh, fss super state 
about this uh, antenna design around 5 db enhancement that we are getting here and how it is like a directivity like it is highly directive antenna that you can see maximum part of radiation is in this direction rest of the thing uh, is like minor lobes side lobes that are there in this particular case if you see this reason then numerically it is it, it will be good to give you the answer but i think nowhere it is mentioned but in that reference paper uh, published one that you can see it is uh, giving you the performance of that one <clears throat> now come to that uh, second example that is performance improvement of slotted antenna using fss now it is an electrical path radiator then antenna 2 and 3 both are step by step then this is basically the uh, our final optimized what r1 r2 are playing how the performance is changing in this one then you can visualize that how the matching which best possible matching we are getting in terms of that one that is uh, by changing the radius r1 and r2 then accordingly we can select an appropriate combination of r1 and r2 in that particular design antenna 1 and antenna 2 at r1 equal to this one and antenna r2 equal to this one that is gain variations and gain variation for different values of r1 and gain variations in different values of r2 when r1 is constant here r1 r2 is constant but r1 is varying from 5 6 7 mm then we have observed the performance in terms of gain and finally Uh, the reflection coefficient variations in terms of that uh, antenna 1 to 3 1 to 3 means uh, 3 is finally optimized that is giving the best possible matching here uh, 4.8 something frequency uh, sorry 5.525 uh, 5.25 3 like that then ultimately that uh, gain variations in three different cases here for this one reflection coefficient and antenna 3 comparison is such the drastic change antenna 1 is the reference one black color is reference one and in this peak if you see this reason then ultimately it is giving you a drastic change of 5 6 db by uh, by taking that one as it this one then fss unit cell and their property is this uh, different deep analysis then ultimately this is a fabricated prototype and Uh, this one that like uh, for maintaining that air gap of around 17 mm this uh, teflon rods are used which performance have been analyzed in the simulation also and it was not going to degrade the performance of the fabricate prototype that's why we are used this uh, teflon rods as a super as a like uh, to maintain the air gap of the particular frequency like you just see this one 4.4 to 9.8 measured simulated and 8.9 approximate that is the measured values then come to that uh, one radiation patterns for this one and concluding remark for this talk that evolution of wireless technology and specifically yield of advanced technology that we have expanded and ebg structures modeling and application four different example for fixed band noise characteristic and two different example for total that is a uh, tun tunable or sorry switchable characteristic example 5 6 then 5 and 6 and finally a comprehensive review study on ebg structure modeling schemes and feature oriented study of ebg structure band noise characteristic of ebg then finally frequency we have moved further frequency selective surfaces and their deep analysis and two design example in frequency selective surfaces we have covered in this presentation in this talk <laughs> this is the total list of presentation on which i have delivered this talk along with that paper presentation paper published in different uh, ci journals then one reference book some part of this book i have also taken for time uh, on different parts of the presentation then come this is that uh, that you need not to discuss in detail some expensive some exclusive remarks for the recovered wind technologies like different advantages and disadvantages are there now recently most recently that apple has launched the apple 11 series uh, smartphone series and to these three versions of a smartphone which are equipped with that ultra wide band ultra wide band technologies in that one that is the most recent uh, development of ultra wide band technology in smartphone application then several other applications are there that we can 
pick up like uh, specifically what part on ultra wideband technology i have discussed in this presentation that was based on susceptible to being unintentionally jammed by the traditional narrow band transmitter that is the band noise characteristic which i picked up as per your interest you can pick up any specific challenge and you can ex explore your skills in that one future wireless uh, future applications of ultra wideband technologies the different application then come to that one so like a few uh, like uh, <coughs> market players for ultra wideband industries specifically ultra wideband uh, products are uh, being manufactured or available in the market using this uh, different different companies then uh, but part that uh, the maximum part of this presentation has been delivered in the reference of ongoing uh, SERB sponsored project here at an ID Silcher. And this is the student team which is associated with me under this is for, under, under this uh, SERB project. Now come to that one. This is my research collaboration. Uh, some of uh, that one have been cited in this presentation and apart from that several others uh, have been associated in different other areas of research. Now Here with this I, I conclude myself and if uh, some queries are there i'll be happy to answer those queries hello ask a query question the feedback form will be posted in the chat box i'll ask you kindly fill the feedback form the form will be open only in 15 minutes i repeat participants are ask to fill the feedback form After the query session, participants kindly fill the feedback form. It is closed within 15 minutes. Any any query from participant side? Good evening. Sir, I'm faculty from Kumbh uh, Jagannath College. Sir, uh, there are a few questions in the chat box. Can I go one by one, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Please, please, please. Carry on, sir. Uh, Another participant has asked uh, how to obtain the dispersion diagram in detail. How, how to? to obtain the dispersion diagram? Okay, that is basically a plot of wave number versus frequency, because three different stages were there in that way, and uh, uh, that is simply a plot of that one. Detail means I am not getting what type of detail that participant so I wants think he's from me. How to? Uh, get it over the simulation bit. I think so. I, how to? Uh, how to obtain the dispersion diagram? I think he is asking how to get it from okay. the simulation. Uh, where is that one? Ultimately, like a detailed procedure is simply that is wave number versus frequency what 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 else i am not getting what else he wanted to ask me it's uh, like uh, if if he require that detailed version then somewhere definitely in that published work it is there if still some queries are left then he is free to ask me related to that any any anything which i have presented here uh, either through mail or whatsapp or whatever is that oh, no yes. problem okay sir thank you thank you sir We'll go for the next one, sir. Uh, yes. Lenin has asked uh, if any change, sorry, if any chance to change in resonant frequency due to change of if REC any, values. If any change in the resonant frequency due to change of RLC values. Yes, yes, of course. Why not? If you are like ultimately how resonant frequency is coming, that is from RLC values. Especially LC values. If you are changing frequency, then definitely LC component will be LC component values will be changed. In vice versa, if you are changing the LC component by inserting some perturbation in the radiator or in the ground plane, that definitely its effect will come in the form of frequency. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question: uh, Can an ultra wide band antenna can be used as a multi band? At uh, 3G, 4G, 5G antenna for smartphones because it covers these bands. Yes, yes. Or any other issues are involved in this? 
yes yes why not because if you see one of the slides where i have clearly mentioned that ebg structures can be used as an multi band characteristic also in ultra wide band either you can create that ultra wide band using xyz technique that is a different thing but you can in you can use that one as an uh, multi band characteristic also like you c band with ultra wide band like one of that one csr are based that uh, tunable band noise characteristic that work is uh, giving the multifunctional characteristic for c band uh, cognitive radio spectrum as well as ultra wide band that no problem in place of cognitive radio you can tune yourself for 3g 4g 5g whatever is that 5g means only sub 6 gigahertz band will come into the picture with uwb if if you are intention is to design some uh, higher values 27 gigahertz or something like that that is not possible to be incorporated in your uwb sub 6 gigahertz band is 3.4 to 3.8 gigahertz that can be tuned easily with the existing uwb antenna no problem at all along with that xyz band that you can incorporate no problem thank you sir we will go for the next question so is it possible that the band yes, notch be achieved for a wide range of frequencies say yes. for a range of 2 or 3 gigahertz instead of for a sharp resonant frequency okay okay now ultimately uh, as far as band notch characteristic is concerned Uh, what main problem there? Because ultimately, what we are going to do in band noise correctness, we are incorporating the effect of uh, band stop filter. If the stop filter lower and upper cut off frequency are not sharp, then ultimately some part of energy will be lost. Our intention is to make that one as sharp as possible, so that that band noise correctness should give the should give the uh, uh, ideal response. in case of band noise characteristic we are never used that wide band that one that noise band should be as narrow as possible and its peak its peak should be as high as possible oh, thank you sir the so next question is uh, what's the difference between meta material super straight and uh, fss super straight nothing because meta material if you convert into two dimensional surface then it becomes meta surface meta material equivalent to one element ultimately if you take that one in two dimensional surface here fss frequency selector the surface i have created in the form of that is structure if you take in place of ebg structure if you take that one in the meta material unit cell then ultimately no problem at all But the meta material characteristic will give meta material unit cell will give you a different characteristic of epsilon r and mu. Here our intention was to incorporate the effect of the TBG unit cell in terms of phase reversal characteristic and surface wave reduction. That was our intention. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question: Whether the uh, EBG structure and the defective ground structure both the things are same? EBG structure and Effective ground structure. EBG structure then? EBG not structure is same as defective ground structure. No, 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 not at all. <clears throat> defective ground structure means DGS is like ultimately the simplest. Uh, what, what? If I go back to that one uh, basic uh, uh, definition of the TBG, any conducting periodic peak. Behavior or any dialectic periodic behavior that we are considering as an EBG unit cell. The simplest EBG unit cell may be a slot itself. No problem. If you are having some sort of that uh, inductance and capacitance within that slotted geometry, then you may treat it as an EBG unit cell. It is not hard and fast to that. You need to have that EBG structure. What complicated form I have discussed here. If possible, if if it is up to you, if you can design an EBG unit cell behavior by using a slotted geometry, then it, it is it's okay, no problem. But it is entirely different with the DGS. Okay, so like the... EBG structures we use the. the... So you can go ahead. Sir, is going for the final question, sir. Hello. Yes, please. So, what is the main difference between CSRR, SRR versus EBG?
<laughs> again same same kind of question uh, like uh, for that one i need to go back to any 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 initial part of that presentation where some kind of uh, uh, that one uh where is that uh, three uh, like this one <clears throat> uh, is the screen visible yes sir, it's visible sir. okay okay now you see this one uh, let me come into that uh, uh, slide show more uh, like this one what you will call this one this is a slot is it a slot yes or no i i am i'm talking to that particular participant who is uh, this doubt uh, uh, this is a slot okay okay uh, okay now like what you will call this one this one because here you, you cannot model this one in terms of split ring resonator or complement split ring resonator like this this uh, slot the slotted geometry they started here continuous slot slot continuous 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 here it is continuous here up to here here it is continuous here it is terminating here now from the center point again it is going in this way continuous 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 this one then here it is this one ultimately if you see this one it's entire thing it is also ebg and it is also ebg one like here you are having two category of uh, material one is ma conducting material that is this uh, uh, dark shaded area that is single all are connected okay this 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 all are connected and here if you see that white portion of this area this this entire region is connected to this entire white portion region entire this portion region this portion region and this like uh, 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 a different shapes of that one different shapes of uh, what uh, conducting surface and different shapes of dialectic surface both are existing here the same thing will you will find here also here also here also here also now if i go to that one csr or is complement split ring resonator because for that one i need to go uh, to that one uh, uh example 6 i think 6 or 7 yes uh, tunability mm -hmm. this one like this shape i have called it complementary split ring resonator this one this one this is complementary split ring resonator why it is complementary ultimately if a copper surface if you place this one if you are taking a copper strip in this shape that is srr split ring resonator that is more or less similar to the unit cell of that one what you will call it one metamaterial unit cell okay and it is reverse of that one but because in this shape you are having a dialectic reason not a copper reason that's why it is a complementary split ring resonator that is the fundamental difference between CSRR, SRR, and DPG unit cell. Sir, one last question, sir. Yes, please. If you are incorporating FSS structures in ultra wideband MIMA antennas, okay, can we achieve good isolation? Yes, yes, because mutual complexion is the application of EBG, no problem. Mutual uh, in one of the application part of that one. Uh, EBG, different application of EBG structure that I give in mutual coupling reduction. Thank you, guys. Uh, is there any, sir, good uh, evening, sir. Can I ask one question? Sir? Yes. Hello? Hello? Grandpa, sir, can uh, go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Timer, sir. Good evening. Uh, very wonderful session, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, here I have a couple of queries, sir, in, in this slide. Uh, Yes. Sir. Here uh, you are using a DC blocking capacitor, right? Uh, why? Why? Which uh, DC slide? blocking capacitor in this slide? Currently, there is one slide, right? That uh, tunable antenna. Okay. Why don't we? Why, why don't we put okay, a single okay. DC yes, blocking sir. capacitor next to diode, sir? Instead of that, uh, go for two blocking capacitor in that uh, 
copper line is there any specific reason or uh, no no where, where are dc blocking capacitor that green color one sir that green color one uh okay no no where 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 you are seeing this one only these ends you are talking about with these ends where this uh, dc blocking capacitor are placed here these and these ends hello hello oh. hello yes please some background sound is coming background sound <coughs> hello yes please yeah yes sir that i in the mid middle in the middle resonator sir in middle copper line you are using two dc blocking capacitor right uh okay yes instead of that two c uh, two dc blocking capacitor if you put single just uh, next to diode again the same performance will be there or uh, yes yes it's a good ultimately what you have to do you need to take several other constant because of size because in this reason you have to do all the things then due to several come factors will come into the picture that ultimately how to place that single diode because in in that perspective na because the size is limited everything you have to incorporate here that is very hard Okay. Because okay. if you correlate this reason in, if you correlate this reason in terms of millimeter size, and the size of the individual diode, then you will realize this problem. By looking at the surface side, this this query will come into the picture, no problem. But uh, that detailed version is there. The detailed analysis of that one is there in that paper. Okay, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hello, sir. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, good course. evening, sir. Sir, uh, actually, my good doubt evening. is, uh, like, uh, we have used uh, this particular antenna as you have said as a band stop filter, right, sir? So that uh, you have said that uh, it should be. Can we use this particular? No, as band stop uh, filter. Actually, this particular uh, antenna rejects at particular frequencies, right, sir? So can we have this antenna to, yes. Uh, yes, yes. like, uh, radiate at a uh, Uh, stop at particular band of frequencies. Like say, it can uh, radiate at two bands, and in between can uh, it can reject a band of frequencies. Can it? Is it possible? Yes, 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 yes. Of course, yes, yes, possible. That 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 all these things ultimately it is rejecting only specific bands. For example, one to two gigahertz. Below one gigahertz, after two gigahertz, everything is being radiated. No problem. It is possible. so that is being done by uh, uh, tuning the circuit is it sir, like L lnc values yes no no the concept of the uh, concept of band noise characteristic is, i'm 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 not sure whether it is clear to you ultimately it is rejecting on a specific band a specific frequency for example 2.4 to 2.8 you have tuned for rejecting that specific band below 2.4 after 2.8 gigas everything is being radiated by that antenna no problem at all so that's why below that one it is a pass band and after 2.8 gigas it is a pass band between 2.4 to 2.8 gigas it is giving you the stop band characteristic okay that sir that is the basic fundamentals of behind that band noise characteristic uh, so my question is that 2.4 to 2.8 can that band be increased so it can be increased say from 2 to 3 as well Right, yes, yes, definitely. That is up to you. If you are not able to uh, uh, reject the entire band, 2.4 to 2.8, you are focusing only a specific frequency, 2.5 gigahertz. Then accordingly, you can tune your design. No problem. Okay, sir. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your patience for answering all the questions. Now, I would like to invite Swetha to give word of thanks. honorable teachers respected teachers and my student friends it's your privilege to have been asked to propose word of thanks let's be grateful to the people who enhanced our knowledge today i on behalf of ieee extend a hearty word of thanks to mr taimur khan 
for praising your important work and sharing with us your findings and opinions. I must thank all the participants and my friends who worked with for this webinar to be a successful one. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We will uh, thank you very much. meet you on the next uh, workshop, sir. For giving me a wonderful opportunity for interacting around complete two hours. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Several, several things I have learned from your registered participants. Yes. So thanks for uh, spending your valuable time uh, in this occasion, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Can I leave yes, the session? Yes, uh, we can leave the session. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, all participants. Now you can uh, fill the feedback link and. Uh, the e-certificate will be provided only for the persons who are registered. Thank you. You can leave this session now.